Lesson 1.12, Word Problem Solving, Draw a Diagram. We're going to model addition and subtraction by drawing a diagram. One strategy that we can use to solve word problems is to draw a diagram. We can draw a bar model to represent important information and help us solve the problem. Bob sold 56 t-shirts on Monday. Then, on Tuesday, he sold 22 more than he sold on Monday. How many t-shirts did he sell in all? We can make a bar for 56 for the amount he sold on Monday. It says on Tuesday he sold 22 more than he sold on Monday. So that means we have the same amount, the 56, plus 22 more. It wants to know how many he sold in all. We can add the 56 plus 56 plus the 22, which equals 134 t-shirts. Lisa scored 84 points in the first round of a computer game. She scored 21 more points in the second round than the first round. What was Lisa's total score? So the first thing we need to do is ask ourselves, what are we finding? We need to find her total score. We circle the important information. She scored 84 points in the first round and 21 more points in the second round. We make a plan to solve the problem. We can draw a bar model. And 21 more and total score are clues to add. So we know our operation is going to be addition. We draw a bar model to show the number of points that Lisa scored in each round. In the first round, she scored 84 points. In the second round, she scored 21 more than the first round. So we're going to do 84 plus 21. We need to find the value of this black square. We do our addition. 84 plus 21 is equal to 105. We know the black square is equal to 105. Now we know that's what she got in the second round. We need to add the first and second round together to get a total score. We have 84 in the first round, 105 in the second round, and that's going to be equal to a black triangle. So we need to add to find the value of the black triangle. We do our addition, 84 plus 105 is 189, and that's equal to the black triangle. Lisa's total score was 189 points. So why are we using the black square and black triangle? Well, the black square and black triangle will represent an unknown amount. We can say 4 plus 3 is equal to a black square. We know 7 is equal to the black square. If we have 8 minus a black triangle is equal to 6, we've learned that we could take this difference 6 and use it as the subtrahend and do 8 minus 6 and that's equal to 2. So we know the black triangle is equal to 2. These are related facts, aren't they? By understanding the concept of the black square and the black triangle, it'll help you in the future when we start working with algebra. Bob scored 265 points in a computer game. Dave scored 142 points. How many more points did Bob score than Dave? We ask ourselves, what do we need to find? We need to find the difference between Bob and Dave's scores. We need to circle the important information. Bob scored 265 points. Dave scored 142 points. We make a plan to solve the problem. We can draw a bar model and use clue words to know which operation to use. How many more is a clue to subtract. Because our operation is subtraction, we're going to draw two bars, one for Bob and his 265 points and one for Dave and his 142 points. At the end of Dave's bar, we're going to draw a line to show the difference between the two of them. See? It's going to be black square points, whatever that amount is. We can do our subtraction, 265 minus 142. 
we get 123 is equal to that black square. The black square is equal to 123 points. And by drawing a bar model, we can see that we need to find the difference between Bob's points and Dave's points. If we estimate the difference first, we'll know if our answer is reasonable. We round both the minuend and subtrahend to the same place value. If we round to the nearest tenths place, we have to round that one to the nearest tens place. We would get 270 minus 140. And that's equal to 130, which is close to 123. And Bob scored 123 more points than Dave. That's the difference between their scores. An animal shelter found homes for 76 dogs. They also found homes for 23 fewer cats than dogs. How many dogs and cats found homes? First thing we do is figure out what it's asking of us. What do we need to find? We need to find how many cats and dogs found homes. We can circle the important information. There were 76 dogs and there were 23 fewer cats than dogs. We make a plan to solve the problem. We can draw a bar model. We use clue words to choose the operation. 23 fewer is a clue to subtract. If there were 23 fewer cats than dogs, we need to find 76 minus 23 to find how many cats. How many dogs and cats is a clue to add. So we need to subtract, then we need to add. So there's two steps to this problem. Because we're subtracting, we make two bars. One to show the amount for the dogs, 76, and one to show the amount for the cats. Whatever the cats number is, it was 23 fewer than the 76 dogs. We need to subtract 23 from the number of dogs to find the number of cats. We can make an estimate by using compatible numbers. 76 is close to 75, and 23 is close to 25. We subtract 75 minus 25, and that's equal to 50 cats for our estimate. So we know the cats need to be about 50. We do 76 minus 23 and get 53 cats. That's going to equal the black square unknown amount of cats. Now we need to add the number of dogs and cats to find how many dogs and cats found homes. We have 76 dogs, we have 53 cats, and our black triangle is going to be equal to the total of the dogs and cats. We can use compatible numbers to make an estimate. 76 is close to 75. 53 is close to 50 and 75 plus 50 is equal to 125 for our estimate. We do our addition. 76 plus 53 is going to equal this black triangle total. 76 plus 53 is 129, and that's equal to the black triangle. 129 is close to our estimate of 125, so we know our answer is reasonable. To know an answer is reasonable, we make an estimate of what the sum or difference is and see if the sum or difference is close to our estimate. What is the greatest number that can be rounded to 300 if we round to the nearest 100? When we round to the nearest 100, the digit in the tens place tells the hundreds place what to do. If it's a 0, 1, 2, 3, or 4, it tells the hundreds place to stay the same. If the tens place is a five, six, seven, eight, or nine, it tells the hundreds place to go up one. So the tens place must be a four. If it were more, it would make the hundreds place go up one to 400. The ones place will be a nine because that's the greatest number of ones we can have. If there's a four here, it's gonna tell the three to stay the same, and then the four and the nine are gonna turn into zeros, and it would round to 300. So the greatest number that can be rounded to 300 would be 349. If we added one more and we were at 350, that 5 tells the 3 to go up, so that would round to 400. So that wouldn't work. 
so we are at 349. The least number would be 250. If we went back to 249, the 4 would tell the 2 to stay the same and it would round to 200. So any number between 250 and 349 would round to 300. 349 would be the greatest number that can be rounded to 300 when we round to the nearest 100. When we use bar models for addition, we put the bars together. If we had 84 and 21 more than that, we would do 84 plus 21, which is equal to 105. When we use bar models for subtraction, we show the difference between the bars. We have two bars for the subtraction. We show the menu end and the subtrahend, and whatever this amount here would be the difference between the two bars. We would do 76 minus 50, which is equal to 26. So this area by the red line would be a 26. This lesson is the end of chapter one. We're going to move on to chapter two, which is all about tables and picture graphs and bar graphs and line plots before we move on to chapter three and start working on multiplication. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope you're doing well and I'll see you next time. Bye.